Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy This is the Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with another installment of Building the Team. So, this week, our uh, build is 800 points. And the team must include a, a figure with the monster keyword. Now, generally, monster refers to, well, monstrous characters. So, anyway. Let's get started, shall we? I've come up with three potential ideas. Um, one, the Fatal Five. We'll start there. Um, the Fatal Five are a quintet of Legion of Superheroes villains, meaning they're villains from the from the slightly, well, somewhat far future, a thousand or so years ahead. Now, the figure in quite with the monster keyword here is this ugly bastard, Mano, who is, depending upon which version, which continuity we're in, we're currently in, is either is or isn't the, uh, the mutated son of uh, Lightning Lad and Saturn Girl. Again, reset buttons. Yay! So anyways, Let's basically do a. Uh, well, let's start with. Let's just do this lowest in ascending order. So we'll start with. Mano. Alright, so Mano is. comes in at 100 points and has the calculator team ability. He's also. He has the Fatal Five, Future, and Legion of Supervillains keywords is a trait antimatter touch. Mano can use poison. He can use it normally or he can deal one damage to only one opposing character and that damage is penetrating damage. Okay, that's not bad. It can be very useful as well if you're only adjacent to one opposing figure. Some charge and some sidestep. Uh, then we've got on uh, attack special power disintegrate walls. Give Mano a free action and destroy an adjacent wall or square of blocking terrain. Well, that's just plain cool. So, basically, he can destroy a wall and then charge someone. Because, oh, hey, look at that. He's got exploit weakness on his starting on his starting click. Okay, that's... You know, for 100 points, that's not bad. Um, they're a little... Sadly, they won't have a team ability to copy, as while Emerald Empress does have the um, Mystic's team ability, it's no longer copyable. All right, anyways, moving on to Therok. Therok is the cybernetic leader of the Fatal Five. Comes in at 150 points, has a calculator team ability. The Fatal Five, Future, Legion of Supervillains, and Robot keywords. These are the traits Cyborg Leader. Therok can use leadership. When he does, characters with the Fatal Five keyword are considered a lower point value. So any more that basically just means he has the that he has traded he has leadership traded. Anyways, we've got starts off with running shot, then clicks in the charge, then stealth. We've got a special power on attack, arm configurations. Therok can use blades, claws, fangs, energy explosion, and penetrating psychic blast. That's not bad, especially with a love and attack. Um, then we've got uh, got some impervious, some invulnerabilities, regen. Perplex and outwit. Um, you know, start. He's also uh, indomitable, presumably because of the fact that he's half a robot. So, anyways, moving on to Persuader. Now, Persuader is the first character. Ah, shit. Persuader is the first member of the Fatal Five I ever came to know of. The, the existence of at all. Uh, way back 
due to the figure's first hero clicks appearance back in uh, the DC Legacy set. Um, which was a very, very, very long time ago. Um, this was back in the Rev era, and I actually... I used the hell out of that sub bitch. He was a wild card with charge, blades, and exploit weakness. Actually, he might not have had blades. He may have just had four damage. I don't remember. Either way, he was... Yeah, he he was a member of many wildcard abuse teams that I used back in the day. That's how I came to know that there was a character named the Persuader. And did some looking, and oh, he's, he's from the future, and he's a Legion of Supervillain. He's a Legion of Superheroes villain. Oh, oh, he's part of a group called the Fatal Five. Neat. Okay. Anyway, so... Persuader... Again, calculator team ability. Comes in at 175 points. He's got the Fatal Five Future Leader Supervillains keywords. And he's got the trait Atomic Axe. Persuader can use Blaze Claws, Fangs, and Combat Reflexes. When he rolls a D6 for Blaze Claws, Fangs, and the result is a 3 or less, he deals penetrating damage. So he, you're actually kind of encouraged to roll low with him. Um, got some charge. The, Clicks into some in a flurry. Right off the bat on attack, we've got cut through anything. Persuader can use precision strike and quake. Then later on, we've got, got just plain quake. Uh, we start off with the, on defense with impervious, and then that goes into invulnerability. And nothing on damage. Not that he really needs it. It's, like I said, maybe I can I see him having some exploit weakness. Maybe but, you know, I'm okay with the fact that he doesn't. Next up, we've got Validus. He's pretty easy to get in the fr well in the frame. So, Validus, yeah, with the starting click we're, we're using, he comes in at 175 points, though, if to start him at, his, at top dial, he would be at uh, 249. But like I said, we're starting him off at his 179 point. So, we've got the calculator team ability. Brute, Fatal 5, Future, Leader, Supervillains, and Monster keywords. The trait, Monstrous Body. Valor can use super strength and can't be targeted by the penetrating psychic blast. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6. And on a result of 4 through 6, Validus can immediately use Pulse Wave as a free action with a lock damage value of 2, ignoring friendly characters. Not bad. Especially that whole ignoring friendly uh, characters part. Anyways, we've got uh, the, some Charge, some Flurry, some Running Shot, Quake. Uh, we've got the Brain Bolt special power, which he actually starts with on his 135-point uh, uh, starting dial. Uh, Validus can use Penetrating Psychic Blast. When an opposing character with an action token takes damage from Valdis' attack, give that character an action token. Um, got some impervious, which I think we click. We, the, uh, that won't be there on the uh, 175 point dial. Um, invulnerability, toughness, and close combat expert, which he clicks into. Or has already clicked past. Either way, it's not on his first click. And he has very decent combat values. So yeah. This guy. He, yeah, he's in. Next up, we've got... Emerald Empress. Now you can see there's an attachment to her uh, figure. The Emerald Eye of Ekron. The Emerald Eye of Ekron is what uh, is how Emerald Empress gets gets her power. Um, anyways, she's got she comes in at 190 points. Has the Calculator and Mystic team abilities. Fatal Five, Future Legion of Supervillains, Mystical and Ruler keywords. We got the trait Emerald Eye of Ekron. At the beginning of the game, place an Emerald Eye of Ekron relic token in, in Emerald Empress in Square. This object does not doesn't count towards your force and is described on the back of this card. 
she automatically succeeds in rolling for the Emerald Eye. When assigned the Emerald Eye and, has, and she has two action tokens, she can use her speed powers as a free action. Well, that is ha pretty handy dandy. Oh, I forgot to mention, Valis has uh, Indomitable, as does Emerald Empress. Anyway, so we start off with some running shots, and that goes into my, into my control. Got some pulse waves, and penetrating psychic blast, some prisoners of strike, impervious, super senses, energy deflection, outwit, and perplex. And now, the Emerald Eye of Akron. This character can use mind control, incapacitate, and improve targeting, ignores hindering, and characters. And it isn't dealt un unavoidable damage from mind control, though, bad note, that's no longer a thing, so. When this character takes damage from an attack, the Emerald Eye of Akron is placed in an adjacent square. Characters may attempt to be assigned Emerald Eye of Akron more than once per game. That ain't bad at all. And that is the Fatal Five, who will potentially be using this week. Now, moving on to the center team, which is actually both a Marvel team and a DC team. It's this is an Atlantis team. Now, our monster of choice is this, uh, is this guy, Giganto. Giganto is one of the Colossals from the Avengers Infinity set. In fact, the set has two different versions of him. One is just him, and the other one is him and Namor. Anyway, once again, we're going we're to go in ascending order. First off, we've got... At 45 points, the trench. And from what I understand, these guys will actually be appear. These guys will probably be appearing in uh, the upcoming Aquaman movie. So, um, this is a honestly, it's just so I had this to fill some points. The trench is 45 points. Has no team ability has the Atlantis and Monster keywords. We got a trait, Cannibal Race. When an adjacent friendly character with the Dolphin Speed Symbol or Dolphin Transporter Symbol is KO'd, you may heal the trench of two damage. Um, on speed, you've got a special power, Undersea Predators. The trench can use charge. If it began its turn occupying water terrain, it can use hypersonic speed. So, I might want to definitely want to be looking for a map of water terrain if I use this team. We got some charge, we got some blaze, we got some toughness. And it's a, you know, for 45 points, not, not a bad generic. Next up, we've got at 60 points, and on, in the, on the Marvel side of things, Namorita, late of the New Warriors. Namorita comes in at 60 points, has the Atlantis, Celebrity, Defenders, and New Warriors keywords. Uh, she's got a trait, Octopoid Camouflage. Namorita can use Stealth. She can use Shape Change if she's adjacent to a wall or square blocking terrain. Not too shabby. We've got Sidestep with some Charge. Uh, we've got a special power on Attack, Acidic Touch. When Namorita hits an opposed... Mm. It's an adjacent opposing character that can use impervious, invincible, or invulnerability. This turn, that character can use that power, but can use toughness instead. Now, noting the fact that it says this turn, not this attack, you probably want to have her go in and hit someone right off. Like, say, have her hit Therok right off. Oh, hey! Now Therok can't you can use only use toughness instead of uh, impervious, and then oh well, you know, Aquaman will come along and mess him up along with everybody else until basically until his uh, reducers are all gone. And then we got some super strength, uh, toughness. Combat Reflexes, and finally, Close Combat Expert. Next up, we've got Mira, DC's Atlantean Queen. I actually really like this sculpt. It's kind of simple, but at the same time, just that, just that whole thing of her, you know, 
flying, exploding out of the water like that. It's just so cool. Um, 84 points, no team ability. We got the Atlantis and Ruler keywords. We got the trade at Aquatic Extension. Mira's range value is equal to 1 plus the number of squares of water terrain she occupies or is adjacent to. Not bad. We got some sidestep, we got some charge, we got some telekinesis. Always useful. We got some incapacitate, some precision strike. Blades cause fangs, toughness, super senses, leadership, again, always useful. We got, after leadership, we got a day without the special power, a day without water. When an opposing character within these three squares is given a non free action, after action is resolved, place a thirst token on the char that character's card. Characters with any thirst tokens on their card modify their combat blades by minus one. When a character clears action tokens, remove one thirst token from its card. Then we finish it up with Battle Fury, which. Okay, alright. Battle Fury can be useful, but can also be a bit of a hindrance. Anyways, back to the Marvel side of things, we've got Namor, Marvel's King of Atlantis. One of more, ba more eligible bachelors as well, because, you know, no queen. Namorita being his cousin, after all. We got, he comes in at 110 points with no team ability. We've got the anti-registration, Atlantis, Defenders, Illuminati, and Ruler keywords. We've got the trait King of Atlantis. Other friendly characters with the Atlantis keyword modify their attack value by plus one. Namor can use leadership. Look, that's, that's good. And it's not, and it doesn't refer to adjacent or within range or within line of fire. No, no, it's... Just with, you can just leave Namor back in the starting area, for, and you know, just let everybody else, you know, do all the, do all the heavy lifting. We start off with some side step. We get this, uh, some charge. On attack, we've got the special power Imperius Rex, which is kind of his uh, um, his catchphrase. Give Namor a power action to place adjacent an Atlantean warrior bystander, or give Namor a double power action to place adjacent two Atlantean warrior bystanders. You may not use this power if there are more than four Atlantean warrior bystanders on your force. Okay. Uh, after that, he gets some super strength. Starts off with vulnerability, defense-wise, and then toughness. And he's uh, also, he is... Um, Indomitable. We got some close combat expert and some empower. Now the Warriors of Atlantis, Warrior of Atlantis uh, bystanders. Um, they've got charge, combat reflexes, and close combat expert. Um, they have the Atlantis keyword, and their move actions don't count toward, count against your action total. So they still they also get that plus one from uh, Namor. So that's cool. Anyways, next on the list we've got Ocean Master, who is kind of uh... so okay. First off, Namor has a tendency to be both hero and villain. Well, Aqu well, Aquaman is more like when he's a hero. Ocean Master is more. More along the lines of him as a villain, which, but also with also with some similarities to um, the villain Atuma. And yeah, I can already hear the jokes. So, anyways, Ocean Master comes in at 115 points. Got the Atlantis, Mystical, and Ruler keywords. Uh, he has a tidal wave trait. Once per game, give Ocean Master a double power action and choose an edge of the map that your starting area is adjacent to. Roll 2d6 and double the result. Any squares within a number of within a number of squares away from the chosen edge equal to the result are water terrain and, and adjacent to any other terrain or in addition to any other terrain types this game. So he can basically flood the map. 
which is great with all the characters who have, with all the figures who have, you know, if, you know, that has traits or special powers related to water terrain. Also, the Atlantis uh, alternate team ability also helps. We got some running shots. Uh, we got uh, the special power electrocute. Uh, Ocean Master can use penetrating psychic blast. When he does, he can target any number of opposing characters within range that are occupying water terrain. We got some pre precision strike, some invulnerability, some toughness, energy deflection, leadership, probability control, and range combat expert. He brings uh, deep definitely a lot to the table, that's for sure. Next up, we've got Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. Laugh it up. And to be perfectly honest, this is how I always view Aquaman. An orange shirt, green pants, with short blonde hair. Well, okay. Long blonde hair and goatee works too. In fact, when I was first getting, getting into comics, seriously, that's how he looked. He had, he had long blonde hair, he had a goatee, and he was actually missing a hand, uh, and it had been replaced with a harpoon. It was the 90s. We were like, hey, how do we make this, this character look cool? I know, let's give him long hair and a beard. Well, at least a goatee. Ooh, and, and we'll have piranhas in one of his hands, and we'll replace it with a... With, with, with a harpoon. Yeah. Then he got this weird water hand and then he died. I think. Yeah. Then he came back as a zombie during Blackest Night and then he came back after as a at the end of that he came back as himself. And it was briefly another Aquaman that uh took his place, who had different powers, but yeah, wasn't Aquaman. It wasn't the Aquaman we know and acknowledge the existence of. Anyway, 172 points, no team ability. Atlantis, Justice League, and Ruler keywords. Then he's got uh, enhanced tar targeting, ignores hindering terrain, so Oh, who cares about stealth? Uh, he has the dolphin transporter symbol, symbol so he can carry a friendly figure. Uh, we, we got some running shot, we got some sidestep, then we got some charge. Um, we got on attack the special power Trident of Neptune, Relic of Atlantis. At the beginning of your turn, choose one to last until you choose again. Aquaman can use Enhancement and Leadership, or Aquaman can use Energy Explosion, or Aquaman can use Penetrating Psychic Blast. Okay, alright. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Then we got Blaze Claws Fangs. Uh, on defense, we got Invulnerability, followed by Toughness, followed by Super Senses. Then on uh, damage, we start off with the special power Subtle Telepathic Push. Once per turn, Aquaman can use either Outwit or Perplex. When he does, he may choose tar he may target characters with the dolphin or dolphin, dolphin transporter symbol anywhere on the map. Who needs range and line of fire, right? And then we've got some uh, close combat expert. All right, now for the main event, the big guy. Now for Giganto. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this bad boy showed up in an issue of uh, Amazing Spider-Man or New Year Vows a while back, if you'll, if you'll recall. So anyways, coming in at 200 points, Giganto has the Atlantis, Animal, and Monster keywords. You have the trait Mass Destruction, Super Strength, when Giganto is given a move action, after resolutions destroy all adjacent pieces of blocking terrain, then he can use Quake at no cost. Okay. Then uh, we start off, we got a total of four clicks. The first two clicks, and then uh, click seven and eight. 
of Attack the Surface World. Facing teleport when Giganta uses it. Place hindering terrain markers in the squares he ends his movement in. Okay. Then uh, we've got some charge on there. We've got uh, some flurry. We've got uh, blade claws fangs. We've got impervious. We've got toughness. And we've got exploit weakness. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Alrighty, so. We got a DC team, we got a Marvel and DC team. So now, you know what, let's do a Marvel team, just plain Marvel. This will be an Avengers team, and our monster is gonna be the Hulk. Also a Colossal from the Avengers Infinity set. Anyways, so again, because we've been doing it already with the other two, ascending order. So we're gonna start off with Nick Fury. Yeah, that's right. The man, the myth, the eye patch. Like I just came up with that spur of the moment. So we've got at 45 points. Nick Fury has the Avengers of Initiative team ability, the Aven and the Avengers keyword. He also has the trait. I still believe in heroes. If Nick Fury is part of an Avengers theme team and has the lowest point value and is the lowest point value character on your starting force, he can use leadership and outwit. When he uses leadership, he's considered 300 points. So basically, the funny thing with that is that with the changes to leadership, that last sent, that entire last sentence has no bearing whatsoever because if a figure with leadership at 300 points can still remove a token from, say, a 500 point figure. If they share a keyword. Alright, so we start off with stealth, then we get uh, some sidestep. Then we've got the special power. I recognize the council has made a decision. When an opponent makes a choice from an Avengers assembled trait, you may roll a d6. On a result of 5 or 6, change the effect to the other option. Um, in the Age of Ultron gravity feed set, mo um, the the members of the Avengers each had a trait, Avengers Assemble. And it was basically when this character hit uh, hits an opposing character, the opposing character's controller chooses one, chooses one thing or another thing. And so, you know, it would be one th something that ki it's kind of beneficial to them, and it is like, it is straight up beneficial to you. So, yeah. Then we got uh, some willpower. Some combat reflexes and some shape change. Also, uh, some of the name powers harken back to uh, the scene from the first Avengers movie where he tells the council to stick it. Obviously, starting with the attack power, I recognize the council has made a decision. But, uh, for will, his the name for willpower is. But given that it's a bad decision, because, well, Wiz kids want to put stupid ass on it on a card, because I can understand. And then shape change, I've elected to ignore it. Anyways, moving on, we've got the Fist of Khonshu himself, Moon Knight. Moon Knight, clock has 75 points, has no team ability. He has the Avengers, Heroes for Hire, Martial Artist, Marvel Knights, Mystical, and Soldier keywords. He's got Im improved movement, movement ignores uh, elevated and hindering terrain. He's got a trait, Cycle to the Moon. At the beginning of your turn, remove a moon token from this card, and if you can't, place a moon token on this card. If there's a moon token on this card, modify Moon Knight's combat value by plus one, and he can use willpower. Then we've got uh, special power on movement or on speed. Mo Night Hunter. Moon Knight can use charge, running shot, and stealth. That's pretty damned awesome right there. Uh, after that, he clicks into sidestep. We start off with, uh, well, we click into Precision of Strike. Well, the Blades Claws Fangs. We have some toughness, we have some combat reflexes, we have some regeneration. Some exploit weakness and some close combat expert. We should start off with the exploit weakness. 
That's kind of neat. Alright, anyways, next up we've got the Avenging Archer, Hawkeye. Yes, yes, I know, it's the Avenger whose power is a bow and arrow. Kiss my ass, he's one of my favorites. Hawkeye here comes in at 75 points and has the Avengers Initiative team ability. Uh, he's also got the Avengers, Martial Artist, Spy, and Stark Industries keywords. And an improved targeting ignores characters. So he because one with the Avengers Initiative team ability, he ignores hindering terrain for target for line of fire purposes. He also ignores characters. So there's not a lot of Elevation, elevation is an issue, blocking turns an issue, but that's it really. So we've got traits. You and I remember Budapest very differently. Hawkeye can use running shot. When Hawkeye is adjacent to a friendly character named Black Widow, they both modify their attack value by plus one if not already modified by this effect. That'd be great if I was, you know, using a Black Widow figure. We got some stealth, followed by some sidestep, uh, some penetrating psychic blast, followed by the special attack power, explosive arrows. Hawkeye can use energy explosion and improved targeting ignores and destroys blocking terrain. Then we got on defense, we start with willpower that goes into energy shield deflection. Then we've got um, enhancement on damage. Then after enhancement, we got the deadly hawk. Hawkeye can use ranged combat expert. When he has no action tokens, he may either activate it as a ranged combat action or he may modify his attack value by an additional plus one when using it. Now, the thing with this, it means that he can basically do... He can use his traded running shot to, to activate uh, ranged combat action as long as he doesn't have any... As long as he has no action tokens. So, that is not bad in the slightest. Anyways... Moving on, we've got Captain America, the, f the quote unquote first Avenger. All right, so this is Captain America from the Age of Ultron Gravity Feed. Uh, he comes in at 125 points with the Avengers Initiative uh, team ability, Avengers Shield and Soldier keywords. Um, he has, for an additional five points, I'm with Cap as a trait. When targeted by a ranged combat attack, Cap, uh, Captain America can use Shape Change. Okay, so, the possibility that you, you won't be able to hit Cap. Or to attack Cap, I should say. Then we got uh, Running Shot, followed by Sidestep, and then Charge. Precision Strike, Incapacitate. Then we got invulnerability, toughness, combat, and combat reflexes. On damage, we have a special power, inspiring leader. Captain America can use leadership. When he doesn't succeed, choose a friendly character and modify the attack and defense value of that character by plus one until your next turn. Then after that, we've got close combat expert. Okay. Not bad at all for 125 points. Next up, we've got... Luke Cage. Yes, right. The hero of Harlem. Luke here comes in at 125 points. He's got the Spider-Man ally uh, team ability, meaning he's a wild card, so that's pretty much going to mean he's got the Avengers Initiative team ability, as it is copyable. We've got the Avengers, Heroes for Hire, and Thunderbolts keywords. Uh, when it comes to Thunderbolts keyword, um, after Dark Reign and the Siege, Luke became the leader of the Thunderbolts, as well as an Avenger. Well, he was already an Avenger, but yeah. He split his duties between the two. He split his time between the two duties. And being a dad. We got the trait Mighty Avengers. Increase Luke Cage's defense value by one for each other friendly character within four squares if you use this trait. So, nobody. We got a special power on speed. Danny goes over, I go through. Luke Cage can use an in hand. enhanced or, oh, enhanced movement 
ignores hindering terrain and ignores and destroys blocking terrain. When Luke Cage resolves uh, or improved movement, that's improved movement, ignores hindering terrain and ignores and destroys blocking terrain. When Luke Cage resolves a move action and has moved four squares or less, he can make a close combat attack as a free action. Okay. Kind of charge light. We got sidestep, we got flurry, super strength, quake, invincible, invulnerability, toughness, leadership, close combat expert, and battle fury. Okay, that's not bad for 125 points, and you know. All right, now we're moving on to the Hulk. What you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you, brother? I just felt the urge to do that. All right, so the Hulk comes in at a whopping 350 points. We've got the Avengers, Brute, and Monster keywords. We got uh, we got a trait. No tricks, no hiding. Hulk's strongest there is. Battle Fury. When Hulk atta attacks one or more characters that can use shape change, super, sens super senses, or stealth, modify his damage by plus one. Ooh, eh. Then we got another trait, Unstoppable. When Hulk is targeted without wit or, or opposing perplex, roll a d6. On a four, five, or six, until your next turn, Hulk has protected, outwit, and opposing perplex. So that's that's it's got a 50 50 chance. So, yeah, we got some, we start out with charge, then uh, then sides we, we go back and forth between charge and sidestep on speed. Then we start off mainly with the mass destruction uh, special power, which is the same as uh. Giganto's mass destruction trait. Super strength. When Hulk is given a move action, after action resolve, after resolutions, destroy all adjacent pieces of blocking terrain, then you quake at no cost. Um, then we go back between that and regular super strength. Uh, on defense, we've got. Oh, and on the very last click, on the very last click, Hulk has steel energy. But anyway, uh, on defense, we go back and forth between invincible and invulnerability. Um, at four points on his dial on on damage, this is the only damage power he has. We've got enrage beyond reason. It's a stop click. Free action. Roll a d6 it's on a five or a six. Remove an action token from the Hulk. Okay. All right. Um, and to be perfectly honest, this is this is a pretty bad bamba jamma of a Hulk. So yeah, um, that's that's it for uh, that's pretty much it. I almost uh, put together a fourth team that consisted of um, that would have been either Justice League, Rogues, or uh, Super Society Super Villains with the. Uh, Monster in question being the uh, Flash villain Tar Pit, but I don't know. It's just it's just hard to figure out who to use for it with that, and especially who to use to make you know to make it useful. Anyway, um, that's me for today. Uh, probably be taking tomorrow off on account of. Getting, getting some early sleep so I can, you know, play one, one of these three teams at the top of my game. Um, that is it. Yeah, that's it for today, though. Um, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon are in the description box down below. Don't forget to hit the bell icon, either, uh, so you can be notified of uh, new content. And uh, this is Rock Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard. <laughs>